Good morning. A very warm welcome from Eindhoven. Another, another live stream. Today, uh, you are already used uh, about, about the drill here. Today we have an interesting topic for you in store. Um, it listens to the name of Dingen 7100. And for the ones that also joined the last one, we talked about intelligent parameter security. And in that intelligent parameter security story, we also briefly already touched on this new camera. And that's where we are exactly going to dive into today. And there are three words that you already see on the screen, reliable, precise, and also robust. And that's something that will be at least explained during the next 45 minutes. But luckily, I don't have to do it alone because otherwise we could finish now the live stream. So here on the left, I have uh, two of my colleagues, uh, Vijay, maybe you can introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Vijay. I'm part of the EMEA product marketing team. And we have Bodewijn, uh, our product manager. I'm Bodewijn, uh, product portfolio manager for Bullet Cameras. So thanks to these two guys, uh, we are at least, uh, I think we are, we are going to entertain you in the next uh, 45 minutes. But before we do that, there are, of course, a couple of things that you have to keep in mind. And for that, I'm going to the next slide. As always, you can ask your questions. And you can do that either via a mobile phone when you scan the QR code, or you do it actually directly into the chat box which you have in front of you on the screen. Those questions uh, will pop up here in the studio and we will answer them as we go along uh, during the session, but also at the end we will have a Q&A. So don't worry, we will get to your questions and keep on sending them once they pop into your mind. Um, in the unlikely event that your live stream stops, then simply refresh your browser and that basically should do the trick. So don't worry, we are still with you. So that's all. Uh, let's not make it more complicated. Let's then have a quick and brief look at the agenda. Uh, what are we going to talk about? And first of all, Vijay will say a little bit more about this fantastic camera. And I think that Baudan will be especially uh, enthusiastic about it as the product manager owning this product. And he is so excited that he also will then go into a live demo because you know what they say, the proof of the pudding is in eating. So that's also where he wants to really show off with his product in this case. We talk about robustness as, uh, and we also show where the robustness comes from. So it's not uh, only nice on paper, it will also be shown in uh, real life. And then uh, some outlook for the future yeah. and some takeaways at the end. So I think uh, let's get started. But you know, it's always nice because we do this all together to start also with you before we get into the topic. So we prepare the first poll question for you to already get into action. And that first question would be, what are for you the most important features if you think about a bullet camera in an application? So we give you some time. There are some pre-cooked answers already on your screen. So it's up to you. Give us your results. And let's see if the first results already come in. Ah, they're the first uh, interesting result. That's yeah, always nice that uh, how it still s switches between the one and the other uh, feature. And you hope that it then stays at a certain point in time in a certain balance. Yeah. Yeah, numbers are going up, so, uh, and it's also explainable by. Uh, the considerable amount of people that uh, also joined this live stream, where I'm happy, very happy about. So you still see the numbers go up. And keep on voting, because for us it's also a, a very important uh, indicator. Um, so keep those votes coming, uh, don't worry about it, but in the meantime we will, uh, we will go on. Before we dive into the topic, before Vijay starts talking about uh, the most important features, and I must say if I look at the results still coming in, I think there are some things that you are definitely going to talk about, yes. like the AI capabilities, the image performance, etc. So that's good. So thanks for your uh, feedback. But before we do that, we start with a small teaser video to get into the topic. What is this Dingen 7100 all about? So let's start with this uh, video.
So that's already a first teaser and you already saw some topics that will also come by in the next roughly 40 minutes. We still see the results on the, on the screen and yeah, I think it's clear. So yeah. we have to talk about the AI capabilities uh, and I think that's also something that uh, Boudewijn will, uh, will dive into and also you, VJ, and the image performance. Uh, we also should say something about that and robustness. And I think that the robustness, that's also at least towards the end, something that we are most certainly highlighting. So VJ, yeah. it's up to you. Uh, thanks, Peter. Um, today, I'm very excited to bring the Dinian 7100i bullet cameras to all of you. Uh, this camera is designed for mission critical applications. When I say that, it actually comes from the fact that uh, the camera can accurately detect and precisely classify uh, objects over long distances and at the same time in uh, low light conditions as well. So bringing this together, it's perfect for perimeter security and at the same time also for complex traffic uh, applications. The camera has uh, inbuilt the next gen AI. This next gen AI uh, is a combination of uh, deep learning, uh, intelligent video analytics, and machine learning capabilities. All this together helps us to come out with uh, application-specific um, IVA packages. And I think that's key, yeah, what you now say, application-specific. Yeah? That's yes. something also Baudouin will, will touch on. Absolutely, well. absolutely. Uh, the next important part, which we also saw in the poll, is the uh, best-in-class imaging technology. Uh, the camera has Starlight X and HDRX. These are uh, well-known technologies from, uh, from us in Bosch. Uh, which gives you exceptional imaging. But at the same time, what we bring with this camera is also intelligent IR at, at quite a long distance, at up to 140 meters. So when you're using this camera for perimeter applications, you can actually see how far the camera, uh, can, you can actually see the view, which is, which is critical and super cool. Uh, we also bring in modularity. I will not talk more about the mod modularity right now because Bodwin will show you what that means and that that's, that's unique for this product. Um, and then about the robust design. We saw in the poll as well a lot of, uh, a lot of votes for uh, the robustness of the camera. This camera is built with the highest quality, with durable materials. Uh, and at the same time, we take this camera through a lot of shock and vibration tests. Yeah, you will be super interested to see the videos that we have. It also goes through a certain level of corrosion testing. But at the same time, it, uh, it, it, uh, it has passed the IK10 certification, not just for the camera, but also for the swivel. So, um, yeah, let, let, me, let me leave that to Bodwin because, yeah, he, he will explain that quite well. Yeah. Yeah, the difficult questions we leave yes, to Yes, we leave it to him, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's super easy to install, uh, a three-step installation uh, concept, and we have a patent pending uh, swivel uh, mechanism as well for it. Uh, but last but not the least is the data security. Uh, data security is part of Bosch DNA. Uh, so this provides the, this, the camera provides end-to-end -end data security. Uh, from different aspects, we have a whole set of certifications that the camera uh, is supported. But at the same time, from a durability perspective as well, with any camera uh, from our Bosch portfolio, we provide you five years warranty as well in built in the camera. Yeah, thank you, VJ. I think that's, that's already very clear. And I can imagine it's a lot of information. Eh? And, uh, and I think that that's also the beauty of this live stream. We are going to give also the proof eh? because it's, it's a lot of words on, on the slide. And of course, we all use words like best in class and, and, and uh, best in class imaging, like also uh, the words you used, uh, VJ. But why I'm super excited, and I had a little bit of a sneak preview because we, uh, we looked at the, the materials up front. Um, uh, where we really, where I'm super excited about is that uh, we can also show you, and I think you have a nice example yes. also on the following videos where you say hey, the reliability also comes from somewhere. Yeah. And so the reliability, what, what we want to show you is how good the, the product can detect, especially for a perimeter application. So what we did is we took the camera to quite a long perimeter uh, situation, uh, installed the camera, and then we had uh, scenarios where there is intrusion happening at the perimeter. This is a camera with a wide uh, angle lens um, and you can clearly see that uh, even when the person was crawling and when once he was upright as well, it detected the motion. We did the same test at 110 meters as well with the tele lens version and you can clearly see that the person is detected. We also did the test with in low light conditions with the IR uh, distance or with the IR on and even in that scenario, it clearly detected the person. 
But you were very quickly, let's say, jumping over it, the whole crawling, because that's not so easy for a camera to detect and very crucial uh, at the end of the day for uh, a parameter situation because that's typically what those intruders do. Yes. Uh, you could have crawling situations or, or people on four legs, you know, and, and yeah. stuff like that. And we have actually tested it and that's, the, uh, that's what we show you in the videos as yeah. well on how uh, nicely it detects such scenarios. The next one that I have is also the long range detection. Another key factor when you look at perimeter protection, where you want to actually see how the camera detects, not just in daylight uh, at long ranges, but also when there is no light or how does the IR perform. Yeah? And that's what this video shows you, that we, ha we use the camera with the tele lens, uh, which has an IR distance of 140 meters. Uh, this is actually the scene without IR. You see, it's completely dark. Then we switched on the IR, and you can clearly see at 120 meters, the person is detected and classified. At 140 meters as well, the person is detected and classified. But like always, we pushed the limit. We tested it also for higher uh, limits. Yeah. We, we even did the test uh, at 160 meters, which I will show you. Here, it detects, uh, and to some extent, it classifies. The classification does not work all the time, uh, and that's why we limit it to 140 yeah. meters. But even at 160, you get detection. So actually you're underselling. So you say 140, is, uh, that's what we can do. 160, yeah, okay. Well, that's, yeah. It's fair, it's yes. fair. But also this shows that, that the image quality is exceptional. Uh, because yes. uh, it's also uh, for a camera, what you don't see, you can't detect. Yeah, it's yeah. not just daytime, but also nighttime yeah. that we want to focus on. And that's, that's the key of the product. You touched already a little bit on it, um, uh, VJ, yeah, because this is, of course, on the one hand side, image quality uh, with uh, the IR lighting and also uh, during day and night, the image quality. But there is also something behind there. And that's what we would call artificial intelligence. And I think, by the way, that's your topic. Yeah. So here uh, we see that we have uh, application specific analytics on the cameras. So uh, VJ already mentioned it. For each situation, uh, you have a different uh, needs. In we have here three flavors on the slide. So uh, the camera is by default equipped with IVA Pro Buildings. And IVA Pro Buildings is a very easy to set up uh, detector. It's AI based, detects persons and vehicles, can very accurately classify them. There is a minimum uh, amount of unwanted alarms and there's no calibration needed. So out of the box, it immediately works. Um, this can be used for situations to detect persons or uh, vehicles eh, around buildings, but also counting is, a, is an option that is included. So you can very precise uh, do people counting with uh, IVA Pro buildings. The second package is uh, what Vijay just showed the video is about, hey, that's the perimeter detection. And this is also included in the Dinian 7200i camera. So this is uh, the longest, uh, for the longest range detection. So you can detect intruders in all kinds of situations, if they are trying to hide, if they are uh, crawling, rolling, also if they are hiding behind umbrellas or carrying a big box. We tested all the extreme situations. You cannot fool this you will be detected. Yeah, and that's also because it's interesting, because at the same time we get a question here, if we also did test that, that yes. when people are rolling, but yeah. you just confirmed that. Yes, we do all these tests uh, to make sure that what we claim is also, of course, yeah. working. Um, and then uh, last option is uh, IVA Pro Traffic. This can be activated via license in the camera, and this can be used in, uh, in traffic scenarios where you want to classify vehicles. Um, there's a very high accuracy on classifying uh, between um, trucks, cars, bus, motorbikes, bikes, all these uh, classifications are in to really collect data about your scene. Um, and on top of this, it can do very reliable speed detection and also uh, geolocation. So it can uh, show on a map where the objects are moving. And this is um, something that you need calibration for. And also later on I will show you that this now is also very easy. But I think by the way there is maybe one additional thing to add here is that the, the IVA Pro, as you show it here, the application specific IVA Pro is not typically bound to the camera. Eh? So it's an example here. So for yeah. the Dingian 7100, uh, the buildings and the parameter licenses come as a default standard. Yeah. But the good thing about this whole concept is that you can also have the same packages for different cameras in our portfolio. Right. Yeah. Yes. And we try, of course, to match the, the packages uh, to the application. And yeah. if your camera, like this camera, is optimized for perimeter, then the perimeter pack is included by default. Um, as said, the uh, AI analytics really enriches your metadata. So it's not just uh, detecting objects, but also gives you all kinds of valuable information. And on highways, for example, uh, we can uh, show this by classifying objects. And here we have a scene where the camera 
is uh, classifying between uh, car, truck, bus, and motorcycle. And we just keep it running and uh, not to like, keep you waiting too long, we speed it up a bit. Um, but you can see the counting and uh, of course we check this. And in this scene, uh, in this scenario, it's 100% accurate. So it's really counting all the cars. And you see also when motorbikes, that's why we slow down a bit, the motorbikes are also counted without any uh, problem. So all the cars were detected, all the trucks are detected. And uh, also motorcycles, which is quite difficult sometimes for other products, with 100% accuracy and no misclassification. So this is really showing that um, the metadata contains a lot of valuable information. Yeah, plus it also, and I think that's also why you said rich and, and why it is so precise, uh, or where the word precise comes from, is that you basically say uh, you have a granularity in your data. Uh, so, so you can uh, make statements about cars, or trucks, buses, motorcycles, etc., all kinds of applications that you could think of where this information comes in handy, because yeah. otherwise you would only count vehicles yes. as a total. Yeah. Correct. So here you have indeed more information. And as I said before, uh, it can not only do uh, classifications, but also do speed uh, detection. So here you see uh, the, the camera detecting the speeds of all cars. And this is on the highway in the Netherlands, um, where you are roughly driving about 100 km an hour, if there's no traffic jam. And just to make sure that how accurate we are, we have a colleague driving by. Uh, in his own car, and uh, he is driving 100 km an hour, and you can see the, uh, the camera detects him at uh, 97. I think he needs to do something on this car. <laughs> um, but you can see uh, that it's very accurate as well here. So the speed detection or, and geolocation can give you also situational awareness of... Uh, um, you can position cameras and check the average speeds, and if you see there's a lot of speeding, you can also take actions there. And the geolocation can also give you information about where objects are moving, and yeah. gives you really um, yeah, situational awareness on a map, for example. So yeah, it's but that very valuable also, data. And that was also something that we discussed in our uh, uh, previous uh, live stream, where we talked about intelligent parameter, that it is so important that the camera can give that position because it gives indeed a more situational awareness, mm -hmm. uh, which is also tip, uh, which is also sort of, I would say, a dual advantage because you have the camera anyhow to do, to do surveillance in general sense, and it gives you also that additional information. The same goes for speed, because otherwise I would use something like a radar. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Uh, this camera can do all the speed detection very reliable without the use of radar. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, uh, uh, you said it already, I, I heard you say no calibration and calibration, but I think and that's also something that, that, we, that we really need to address. Uh, sometimes people think calibration is not needed or we should skip it, but, but I think that's also a wrong statement because you need calibration, otherwise you don't get the rich metadata. But it doesn't mean that it can't be easy. No. And I think, about and there you have a good example. Yes, we have uh, something great to show here indeed. Um, up to now, if you want, need to calibrate your camera, you need to measure things and start drawing lines, or uh, uh, even use sensors of the camera to get the, the position, but it's not always very easy. Um, if you want to do speed detection with your camera, or geolocation, the camera needs to know the surroundings, and that's why it needs to be calibrated. And we have something new, and it's called auto calibration. It's AI-based, as you can see here, this is a live setup demo, so we open the auto calibration menu, we click on it, you see the live video, and next you see that the AI was already analyzing the scene, and really, done, that's it. You just calibrate your camera by two clicks, and to make sure it's correct, you can do a verification, that's what's shown here, so you can uh, take the car and place it in the scene, you can use different objects, and put it in the scene to check if it makes sense, uh, if the... Uh, the distance and the, uh, the, the, the position of the camera and the size makes sense. And then you write these parameters to the camera and it's done. So no measuring, the camera makes use of the content of the scene. Yeah, you no need to be on the road to put stuff on there to measure. You use the cars that are already there. The camera uses the cars to calibrate. And it's really, if the camera is up and running in a few seconds on the highway, it has enough data to calibrate. And it's very accurate because the speed detection you just saw is based on this auto calibration and it's very accurate. So basically what you're saying to uh, me, uh, Baudouin, is that uh, the camera uses its artificial intelligence to learn the scene, and basically based on that, it automatically calibrates itself. So it basically then can detect the sizes of the objects, it can then also uh, reliably detect the speed of objects. Yes. So that is uh, all done by the camera itself. And, yes. and the funny car that I see, let's say, uh, that's only for verification, for verification. purposes. So people yeah. should not get the impression, hey, but what are they still doing there manually? That's only... To have to an check extra, extra check. Extra check yeah, if, okay. you, uh, if everything yeah. is okay. Uh, if you start, uh, if you put on your camera and you power it on, uh, and if there's not a lot of traffic, uh, maybe the accuracy in the beginning is not as high, but if there are a few yeah. cars passing by, 
uh, the accuracy gets higher and higher, and at a certain point, it's very quickly, in this scene, it's within a few seconds, you have enough data, yeah, you yeah. have reliable kettlebells. So what you're saying, it would be even quicker if you have a more busy scene. Yeah, yeah. correct. That's, that's at least definitely something about uh, precise. Um, but there are some other things uh, that we want to highlight, uh, and I think that's that's more your job now, yes. because uh, you said at the beginning, uh, this is a product that is really also easy to install. Uh, it also comes with a certain modularity. That was also something that Vijay said. Okay. So Boudou, and uh, yeah, you know, enlighten us, because we have here some cameras already. Yes. So um, what I want to show here now is uh, a few things. The ease of installation of the camera, but also the modularity. So if we start with the ease of installation, uh, on the right side, uh, here we have already the back box of the camera installed. Uh, just to show you how easy that is, I take it off. There's a safety lock that it cannot fall off uh, by accident. So I just rotate it off. And uh, you see here now there's a mounting plate installed. And this mounting plate um, has the hole patterns for different gang boxes. And it also uh, fits to our universal accessories. So once the mounting plate is installed, next step is to click on the back box of the camera. And this is a simple rotator click mechanism. Now it's on and it stays there. It's really strong in position. And all your connections you make here. So no need to hold down the camera to put it in wires. You make the connections here. In this example, uh, we use a punch down connector, which is a unique feature for this camera. Because this camera is mainly used outdoor, uh, you have to deal with bigger diameter cables often. Huh? The cables in the ground or uh, cables with extra shielding. Um, those have bigger diameters and that's not easy to install. And sometimes it's even impossible to get an RJ45 connector on. And then you need to make a box next to the camera to terminate your cable and go with a patch cable inside the camera, which is all extra work and extra costs. So to make it easier, we have uh, in introduced new grommets with this camera that go up to 10 mm cable diameter while maintaining IP67. And you can then use the punch down connector so you don't need to put on the RJ45 connector if it doesn't fit. This punch down is a standard. You can use a uh, standard punch down tool to terminate your wires. It's just simple. Uh, you put your wire in and you click and it, it clicks and the wire is cut off and it's in. And once that is done, of course you want to know if what you did also really works, if your connection is okay. Of course you can still use an RJ45 connector on the camera, but if you use a punch down, you can also use the RJ45 port with a test device to make sure to check if your cable is okay, if the punch down was also good. So then you can plug in the, the patch cable that's provided with the camera, also for inbox configuration. You can plug in your RJ45 port, and you take the other side of your cable that's connected to the punch down, and you plug it in your test device. And when you switch this on, I hope I did a good job with the punch down here. Actually, all lights oh, are green, perfect. so passed. It's very easy, especially for the bigger cables, it makes your life a lot easier to install this. So that's the unique concept of the punch down connector. Once all the connections are made, the next step of course is to install the camera itself. And as said, all the connections are being made here, so no need to put a wire inside the camera. It's just like the concept on a Flexidome 8000. It's, sim uh, it's the same. It has a blind mate connector between the back box and the camera. We have a safety wire to make sure the camera doesn't come off when you incidentally drop it or you can just leave it hanging here for a while if you want. Even if you drop it, it will hold. And that's also an extra reason for this safety lock here. Because this is only clicked on, no screws, but this will hold even if you drop the camera, it will hold this. So, next thing is to close the camera, put it on. I will move a bit in front of the camera now because it's easier for me to use the tool. And I will close the screws the camera is already booting now. It's three screws and you're up and ready to do the rest of the commissioning of the camera. So now it's fully installed. So three screws, the camera gets power and it's up and running. Next step, of course, is setting the field of view of your camera. And here our patent pending swivel concept uh, comes into play. It's not only extremely robust, but it's also very easy to use. Because normally you need to fiddle with a tool, sometimes even multiple screws, which makes it very hard to set the field of view on a bullet camera. In this case, there's a locking ring that you can undo, and the camera is fully loose, and you can put it in any direction you want, and just tighten the locking ring again, and the camera will hold position. And so that makes it very easy if you need to do precise field of view adjustment. You can look at your monitor, set the field of view without using a tool, lock it. And the last step of this is that you 
lock de screw over there. The small swivel locking screw. You put your tool and you lock it and the camera will hold position. In all uh, applications with shock and vibration, it's really tested to the extremes. Of course, there are also situations where you want to rotate your camera. Yeah, so, in, especially in perimeter or sometimes also in traffic, you want to look far away and you don't need to have this wide view. So then you can, uh, I need to undo the screw. <laughs> As said, it's very robust, so undo the screw a bit. Now I can lock the camera again and I can put it to corridor mode. So just rotate the camera 180 degrees. And now the sun shield is on the side, which is yeah, not what you want, of course. So also this is very easy. You can take off the sun shield and click it back on top. You can put it forward or backward as you prefer. Put the screw back in and you're good to go. Of course, I didn't lock the swivel yet, so I should lock it. And then the camera is in corridor mode. So this is also something that's now very easy. The sun shield can be on all four sides, whatever you prefer. You can put it back on top and adjust it to your need. So this is the installation part of the camera. And as said, the camera has, is fully modular. So on the other side here we see a camera that looks a bit different from the front. Uh, this one has a white light module installed. And I will show a bit what kind of options we have here. By default, the camera comes with 850 nanometers infrared illumination. Long range, so it can really go far. Um, but if it's on, you can see some red dots in front of the camera. You can see the camera is on. If you want to have fully covered illumination, so it should be if you want invisible, you cannot uh, see if the camera is on or off, there is an extra illumination module. This is a module that has 940 nanometers infrared, fully invisible. I can quickly show by opening the front of the camera how you can exchange uh, such a module. So I'll do this on this second sample. Remove the front. It's now only tightened with two screws to make it easier to stow. At least I hope it's two. Yes. So the front comes off. And here you have now access to this illumination module. So this can be easily exchanged by invisible illumination. Or indeed, there's also a kit with white light. And this white light kit has two parts, illumination and the transparent front window. Because if you do the black plastic of IR in front, the white light will not work. So this is a small kit that you can buy if you want to use white light. The benefit of white light is that you can do color imaging in low light. So really in total darkness you have still color images. So that's a big benefit. You can also use it for deterrence. If the camera detects a person, you can switch on the white beam. And it's very powerful. Um, I can switch, quickly put back the front cover, and then VJ can show how it works, what it can do. In this case, I will only do one screw. Um, so the white light can be switched on. We will see four LEDs uh, yeah. switching on now. It will switch on. You need to unlock your PC. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. We will do that. Uh, we show it quickly then. Um, shall I unlock it quickly? Yes, please. Sorry yeah. for this. Yeah, that's live, huh? Yeah. We switch this off. I have a very long password. Yeah, safety first, huh? You were all prepared, uh, VJ. Yes. yes, absolutely. And then the, and the computer locks. Yeah. Sorry for this. So um, now you can show on the, the white light. And in this case, there's four LEDs. It's really depending on your zoom level of the lens, what LEDs are on. In this case, we are a bit in the middle. So we have white beam in the bottom, medium beam in the, in the middle. So depending on how you zoom in, the LEDs will cover the full scene. So this is uh, yeah, a quick demo of the, the modularity. Then there's a last accessory kit, and that's our polarizing filter. If you remove the front window, you can also place a polarizing filter in front of the lens on our tele models, the tele lens camera models. This polarizing filter is a small holder and you screw the filter in and then you have the filter in front of your lens. And this is really uh, to reduce reflections. So you can use this if you have a scene with water, wet road surfaces. Um, but also if you want to look inside cars through windscreens, you can put this filter in front of your camera and rotate it uh, to match uh, the surface of your, uh, where you want to remove the reflections. You close your camera. Um, this polarizing filter kit comes with a glass front window. If you put a IK10 plastic front window in front of a polarizing filter, it will not really work. It will remove the effect of the filter. So there's an IK8 glass front window included in the kit. And this uh, combined uh, enables you to remove reflections in all kinds of challenging scenes. So this is 
about the modular part of the camera. It's really easy to yeah, optimize it for your application. Okay. I think that uh, that is a Conclude nice... Conclude the uh, demo. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, but there are still some things to talk about because there are some questions uh, coming in in, okay. the in the meantime. Yes. So maybe we can, we can rearrange ourselves and go back here to the desk. Yes. Because yes. That I think makes it a little bit more comfortable. But uh, thank you, uh, Boudewijn, for the demonstration. I think it, it clearly shows that uh, it's an easy to install camera in only just a couple of steps. Um, and also, and that was also where the question was about, y you talked about the unique wiring concept, the punch down uh, cable. Yeah. And uh, the question actually from the audience is, uh, are there other cameras that also have the same concept? Or basically, are we going to introduce cameras with the same concept? Um, yeah, we are now looking, especially for the applications where you have outdoor, we are looking at options to also do this in other cameras. So this is the first. Um, yeah, this camera is focused on the long-range uh, detection where you have the, the ground cables. For example, our next generation of thermal cameras will also have this, and yeah, there will more cameras yeah, yeah. follow. Yeah. So basically, the, the answer to the question is then uh, is then yes. Yeah. <coughs> so basically, then uh, to the, to the swivel because uh, yeah, you were already very proud by saying it's patent pending, so yeah. that also says something. Although we need to lose the word pending, yeah, yeah. but uh, but anyhow, but that's that's uh, that's that's paperwork. Um, but can you swivel the camera uh, 90 degrees? Yes. So you can. Uh, the swivel can go. I can also show it even. But it can go 90 degrees down, uh, up, left, right. And, ah, you know, uh, we still have time, so let's yeah. let's show it. Uh, we are there, anyhow, and you have the cameras. Yes. So now it's still in corridor mode. I undo the link. So it, this is 90 degrees up, even a little bit further actually. Uh, of course, if you do it fully, you can go in all directions. Of course, there's an end stop, but it's more than 360 degrees, so you can go into all positions, rotate it. So it's fully flexible. It, it has end stops, so it prevents you from doing anything wrong. Yep. So, yeah, 90 degrees up, 90 degrees down, left, right. Um, so if you want to look next to your building on the wall, you can put it in this position. So all directions are possible. That is clear. So yes. that's, that's the proof of the 90%. Yes. Uh, at the same time, uh, by the way, you talked about, uh, so it, it's, it's a general topic, robustness of the camera. And the robustness of the camera, on the one hand side, it's the robustness of the installation. Uh, so, so it's e very easy, but also very robust. You set it uh, with the lock screws, with the swivel, etc. Also with the cabling, which is also uh, uh, robust in that uh, respect. But robustness goes further. And I think that also uh, leads to the, to, the, to the next topic of where, where you find the products uh, in, the, in the application is that there, are, uh, there is also something to be said about the housing, uh, the, the water tightness, etc. So, yeah. So really, indeed, uh, one of the words, uh, the key words of this presentation is robust. But yeah, that's easy to say. But what, what's behind this? What's the proof of this? And that's why we do all kinds of extreme tests. Here in Eindhoven, we have our uh, reliability lab, where we can do all, all kinds of tests. Of course, we also do external tests to prove that it's uh, with certificates that it's all according to what we claim. Um, but in traffic applications, yeah, when the trucks are passing by or when the camera is mounted on a bridge, there's a lot of vibrations. And you want to make sure your camera keeps working but also maintains field of view. So the NEMA TS2 standard is one of these vibration and shock uh, standards we use to make sure the camera holds field of view. Um, when the camera is mounted outdoor, on a perimeter or on, uh, also on, on roads, there's always risk of ingress, water ingress. So we test the camera to the extremes here. Yeah, we, the camera has IP66 and IP67. So IP66 is hosing down with uh, pressured water. IP67 is really submerging it. Uh, it's more than one meter under water. And you can see it on the picture on the right. There's this column of water. And the camera is fully down there and still operational. Um, of course, it's a security camera. So also vendor resistance is important. As said before, it's fully IK10. Uh, no matter where you hit it, it will, uh, it will withstand. It will not uh, dam get damaged. And then the last part is corrosion resistance. It's also very important for the applications where we use this camera. And so it can be in coastal areas where you have a lot of salt in yeah. the air. And then that's also damaging the camera. That's why we have this uh, ISO uh, 4993 standard, which is really a salt, uh, salt mist test. But on top of this, we also do an SO2 test. So we test the camera for uh, uh, environments of tunnels where uh, the exhaust gases of cars uh, um, bit come to the top of the tunnel. And this is really a corrosive uh, gas. And this is also where we test the camera. And of course, this passes. We have all kinds of coatings, special coating on the screws, uh, all kinds of special measures to make sure that the camera will withstand and it will not get damaged in these environments. Yeah, you said it already because uh, we are, uh, I already said it at the beginning, we are live here from Eindhoven and that's also where the magic happens when it comes to testing. 
Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we could not bring our whole reliability lab into the studio because otherwise we could have done it live. But you did make some uh, preparations, uh, by the yeah. way. So. so the next best thing is, of course, to show some videos. Um, and this is uh, videos from our lab testing this camera. Uh, so it's IK10 impact from all different angles, uh, also on the front window. Um, so we really make sure that this camera is surviving impacts and is really vandal resistant. On the right top, you see uh, the famous shaker, where we really do shock and vibration tests. And you the movement looks quite small, but if you look at the camera, this is slow motion, it really gets hammered. It's really stressing to the extremes. This is not what hap will happen in the field, but we go further. We want to make sure that the camera withstands shocks and vibrations and keeps the field of view. Eh? The swivel is very strong. It's not only easy to install, but it's also very big and strong to make sure the camera holds the field of view. And on the left bottom, you see submerging of the camera. And here it goes into the, uh, in the water column, one meter down. There's still some air coming out between the mounting plate, but make sure we, we assure you the camera is waterproof itself and uh, is still operational uh, during and after this test. We don't advise you to use it as an underwater camera, but it's just to show you that it's strong and it's really tested for this extreme applications. And the last one is our famous hull test. It's a highly accelerated life test and a lifetime test. And this is really making sure it, it breaks. Whatever we do, we, we, whatever we put in there, it can, we can break it. it it's temperature shocks from uh, plus 100 to minus 70 in a, in a few minutes. It's extreme vibrations. Um, and we really test to find the weak spots of the product and then improve them. And so in this uh, hull test, we will find the weaknesses, improve them and make sure that the camera we put into the market is very reliable and it can also live up to its five-year warranty without any issues and can be used in, uh, yeah, in all these extreme applications. Yeah, you just said it eh, with the vibration because that's actually something that pops to my mind is that uh, it's, it's very extreme what we test. Yeah. But on the other hand, as far as I understand, traffic applications is also something that in real life should not be underestimated because alongside uh, highways, etc., and also in cities, there is quite some vibration. Yeah. So that's also probably then why this camera is so suited yeah. for... Uh, you have all kinds of tests uh, like uh, NEMA TS2, um, but we also do real life examples. So we put vibration sensors or detection sensors on poles and kick them and really uh, make sure that we vandalize the pole and use this. We measure it and this is what we also use in the, in the, in the vibration and shock tests. So we really also go to real life applications and make sure also the camera keeps working there. It's, it's yeah. of course the standards we, we fulfill, but also we go a bit further. Interesting. Anything else to add there or? Uh I'm not sure if there are no questions about the robustness. I think this is proven and otherwise I would say uh, contact your salesperson to get one of these cameras to yeah. test it yourself because it's yeah. really great. Again, uh, the proof is then indeed in testing it uh, yeah. yourself. Um, but we talked about uh, precise, reliable and robust where we are now in, in, in this section of the presentation. And robustness is not only the ease of installation, it's not only uh, the, the testing, the IK10, the IP67, uh, etc., but also robustness when it comes to uh, data security. Because I think nowadays, and Vijay, I'm now automatically looking at you, nowadays there, there is quite some things going on in the marketplace about, okay, how data secure is a camera. We all know the stories about uh, everything that's going on, cameras being banned, etc., huh? things like uh, the magical words like NDAA, etc. Uh, but there is something that you want to explain there. Uh, uh, absolutely. Um, Bodo and ex explain the, the uh, hardware side of it, but there's also, like Peter, you mentioned, the data security aspect. Uh, it's very important to have the camera uh, cyber secure and at the same time resilient. Yeah? Uh, and that's what we try to achieve uh, on uh, any Bosch camera that we have. This camera in particular, we have gone through a lot of certification, just like how we have, uh, let's say, the uh, reliability, uh, and the NEMA TS2 from a hardware perspective, we also do a lot of tests uh, from a data security perspective. So we have mentioned uh, some of them here. Uh, we have the IoT um, certification. Uh, this is more uh, based on not just the processes, uh, but also the policies, yeah, of uh, what kind of, or what level of data security you have. Yeah. So we have certified that. We have the uh, IEC certification, the 6244, uh, uh, dash four dash one, which has been certified, and this focuses uh, mainly on the industrial automation and control system. So we have that certification as well, and we are in the process of getting the second certification. Uh, and at the same time, we also have the UL certification, uh, which includes the pen test. So that has also been certified for the camera. So let me assure you, from a data security perspective as well, this is quite a strong camera, and 
yeah. kind of uh, tick boxes, all of these uh, standards. There is an interesting question, uh, of course, uh, we, we knew that once we start talking about data security that uh, there are questions around this topic. Uh, is there, so the question here is, uh, is there any way that I can convince my IT department that there is no issue at all to connect this camera to the World Wide Web? <laughs> it's a trick question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, the, your, the IT guy should, should know of these standards yeah. uh, and they follow processes uh, and uh, certain pen tests. And we, we kind of certify to all these different um, tests that we have. So that's, that's, that's more or less. But I think the, the essence of the question, of course, is can we guarantee you, how can we convince an IT department? Yeah, it's, as I said, it's a trick question, <laughs> I believe, because you can't guarantee that. Huh? Uh, yes, we are pretty convinced that our uh, cameras are secure to also be connected, uh, looking at what, what we do in the cameras with the encryption, etc. But yeah, it's always, of course, the discussion that we need to have together with the IT department, what would be best. But I think that at least what you said, uh, VJ, the, the test that we have done, the, the possibilities we have in our cameras and also the security measures that we took, yeah, that at least gives already a good starting position. Yes, I agree. Yeah, then we also uh, touched about it uh, a little bit about NDAA, uh, yeah. because also that's, that's a question that comes up uh, quite, uh, quite often. Yeah. And also there, I think you have, you have something to share or yeah. at least how people can easily make a distinction uh, or how to determine when cameras are or not uh, NDAA compliant, uh, because we know, especially in, in our EMEA region, uh, NDAA is not necessarily a topic, but uh, there can be requirements, especially if you talk about mission critical uh, installations, that NDAA is a topic. So how can people figure out what is NDAA and what's not NDAA? The first thing is this particular camera is NDAA compliant. This is made in, in Portugal and complies to the standard. But at the same time, if you want to know more about which products comply to NDAA, it's always mentioned on our product catalog and also on the data sheets. So it's quite an easy uh, process that we have to check and we always publish this information yeah. and it's freely available. Yeah. So basically what you say, you can easily go to our website, to our product catalog and even filter on the NDAA. NDAA and then you get a complete list of products that are NDAA compliant. Yes. Maybe also interesting because uh, I know that we are giving you a lot of information because we are also pretty excited about this uh, product and especially I see still Baudouin very uh, smiling. Uh, it's, it's, it, as I said, it is his product, but uh, we will also share information with you afterwards to, so that you can read through it quietly and we can also then include the link to how to find NDA yes, we can do cameras, that. yes or no. We talked about the camera, about how it is reliable, how it is precise, how it is also robust. I think uh, with, with the data security part, we conclude on the robust uh, part, but now maybe we have to zoom in a little bit on applications. But before we do that, is again, you know, uh, I said it at the beginning, it's something that we do together here. So we want to again ask your help in if you look at bullet cameras and what you now learned about the Dingian 7100, what typical applications do you see uh, where you would use the bullet? And again, there are some uh, pre cooked answers on your screen. So uh, give us your votes. And again, they are coming in. I, I saw from the first poll that uh, we were around 93, 94. So uh, yeah. We are still expecting now similar numbers. But I'm already happy to see that uh, by the first votes coming in that, uh, that the emphasis is actually is around the parameter. Absolutely. And I yeah. think uh, by the way, when you started the project, uh, the, your main intent was I want to have the parameter camera. Correct. Looks like we did a good job. <laughs> uh, at least something that fits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it is, I think, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty clear, clear. Ah. on where, where the focus is yeah. for this particular product. And that's also a nice segue, I think, into, into the, nice, uh, in, to ah. the next topic. Uh, so keep, keep the things going because for us it's also interesting to get your feedback because that's uh, also your way to communicate to us, um, which we can also consider in, in next projects. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, Vijay, you also want to say something yeah. more about uh, the applications. Yeah, so looking at what all we discussed today, um, I think it kind of shows you what the USP of the product is. Uh, like the poll mentioned, uh, perimeter security is one of the key applications uh, where this camera fits perfectly. There are a couple of points, or let's say a couple of factors which, which bring it to such a solution. One is the reliable long range detection, but it's just not the detection, but the accuracy of the detection and how well it classifies. Uh, and, and a perimeter. Uh, just like how we showed you in the videos, it's not just about a person walking, it could be crawling, it could be rolling and all these things and that is also detected. 
and with the long range IR distance uh, in low light condition, it fits perfectly for a perimeter security application. And this application, if you look at verticals, can fit, ac fit across verticals. That's, that's also yeah. the key, yeah? It's an application called perimeter security, but it would easily fit into critical infrastructure, government, airport, anywhere that you have a long perimeter, yeah? Uh, so that, that com com uh, completely fits into such an application. But at the same time, the second, uh, the second uh, uh, interesting application that uh, the camera would fit in is for uh, ITS or the intelligent transportation systems. Here as well, like we showed you in the videos, reliable detection, the subclassifications, we even had videos of more than 95% or close to 100% of accuracy for vehicle, uh, vehicle counting. Uh, easy to calibrate, that is the key because if you're going to mount this camera on a highway, you don't, know, you don't want to block the camera or the road for a yeah. Too long a time, yeah? yeah. Easy calibration, install the camera, the rest can be done remotely as well because the calibration can be done uh, automatically. Uh, from a hardware perspective, we have the NEMA 3S2 standards, so shock vibration resistance, that's been taken care of. And also we bring in some uh, USPs such as if you need a, sp a specific application which requires a polarizing filter, even that can be added to the camera. Yeah. So then all in all, it, this fits perfectly for intelligent. And that's an interesting one, eh? the, the polarizing filter, because it's something which is actually sounds quite simple, but also indeed, yeah, if you want to look through a, a window of a car, it's not sad that you can see anything. So then indeed these uh, polarizing filters uh, come in very handy. So it's, it, it's, it feels very simple, but yeah. it is yeah, something that uh, we definitely need to take into consideration. What, th there is one question that, that, that uh, keeps on coming back into my mind, so I'm going to ask it now. Um, we keep on hammering on uh, the reliability on the one hand side, so the, the, the reliability of detection, so people rolling, people crawling, etc. But at the same time, we are constantly emphasizing this whole long range detection. Why is it so important? Why, why do we want to have such a long range? The long range is quite important, especially in perimeter, because you need to have that extra time uh, before any kind of event happens on your perimeter. So the further you can detect, the better it is for us, but at the same time, it also helps you to reduce the number of cameras that you need in a, in a perimeter situation. Yeah, because if you have a longer detection, then you're covering a longer range as well. Yeah. And that helps you to reduce the number of cameras as well. So it's, it's, it's I would say, yeah. a combination of two things that you can do with and such Optimizing these costs, eh, yeah. like uh, with the longer range, less cameras, but it's also less poles that you need to install, yeah. uh, less wiring. And one thing I want to add here is that also the camera do, does this long range with just regular PoE. So there's no need for PoE Plus. So yeah. you also use the standard network equipment. It, uh, it stays below this uh, 12.95 watts uh, of power consumption, even with the long range IR. And that's also really unique. It's really power efficient uh, for the long range detection. Yeah, yeah, so basically what you're saying also for a retrofit situation, uh, where you typically maybe still have a PoE situation, but not necessarily PoE Plus, uh, that this camera would already be. Yeah, but also for new situations, yeah. you can yeah. buy, uh, you, it's less Deeper. expensive equipment. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so exactly. it's also cost yeah. saving. So basically what we say, why reliability and especially long range is, is a cost related uh, factor. Huh? So you, you can reduce the number of cameras. Uh, and on the other side, it's more the early detection in the sense of you get more time to respond. Yeah. Clear. And then thank you for answering my question. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, yeah, let's move on because I think there is also something uh, to say about uh, how we look at the future. Yes. Uh, because we already got the question in, uh, what else are we planning? I think it's also interesting to know uh, how this bullet camera family is, is going to look like in the near future. So, yeah. PJ. We, we, that's also an exciting part for us because now you see uh, we, we, are, we have released the Denian 7100i, which is a high-end camera in our portfolio. But at the same time, we see the bullet portfolio growing uh, a lot. In the coming future, we will release uh, a 5100i uh, bullet as well, uh, more focused towards buildings and those kind of applications, uh, and then also a Denian uh, 3100i. So with that, we complete the portfolio yeah. uh, for our bullet uh, uh, family, and we also see the bullet family bec becoming quite popular in all these different applications. So uh, there's more to come. Yeah. And that's always good to know. Eh? Yeah. So then uh, in one of our next uh, live streams, we will most certainly touch also on these, uh, on these products. Yeah, that basically then slowly but gradually brings us to the end of this, uh, of this live stream and uh, looking at the time that uh, sounds, sounds about right. Uh, so that brings us actually also to the Q&A, or at least before we go there, and uh, hey, again, live TV in this case, mm -hmm. uh, maybe there is some summar uh, summarization here yeah. to do. Uh, I don't know if you want to do it both, or at least someone can start with this. Yeah. For us, uh, the Dinian 7100i 
is, is engineered for perimeter security and traffic applications. Yeah? Uh, what we talked about today brings it all together. It's not just uh, one size fits all. We have a powerful AI inbuilt in the camera, but you can build it up further with, with the perimeter and the traffic, uh, IBA Pro uh, traffic, uh, different applications that it fits. But at the same time, it, it's, it's not just about the I, uh, IVA or the AI part of it. It's also about the um, imaging. And that's where we have the X-series technology inbuilt in the camera. There's a unique thing. We have the 8 megapixel uh, version as well, which will, which, which will be the first uh, 8 megapixel camera with the uh, X-series technology uh, yeah. inbuilt in the camera. So that, that's also something uh, we should touch upon. Um, it, like I, like, like Bodwin mentioned as well, from, it's a robust camera. Um, IK10 uh, certifications, all the different certifications which we talked about today. Uh, easy to install. Uh, and that makes it super, just like how Bodwine showed, yeah? Easy to install at the same time, whatever configuration you're looking at, you can work with it. And at the same time, trusted uh, from a data security perspective as well. And you said it, uh, no, uh, no one size fits all. We already said it at the beginning when we talked about uh, the IVA Pro or application specific AI, whatever we want to call it. Uh, but maybe there is also uh, another point that we need to mention. We said it is already independent from the camera. So I think we can also safely say that there are new developments coming up in the IVA Pro uh, portfolio. Yeah. That is also something that can be then used as an extension to this camera. Yes, yes that, that can be surely done. We are working on other AI applications, which can then be added onto yeah. the camera as well. So I think that's also interesting then uh, for people to, to, to keep track on and uh, what are the next uh, IVA Pro packages. And uh, we are also planning a, a next live stream on uh, artificial intelligence and specifically more on the IVA Pro side of things. But that's something to remember that this is also a very future proof platform, I would almost say it, yeah. uh, because there can also things be extended also from an AI perspective. Um, I already promised it, so we did this quick summary in between, but uh, it's time for the Q&A, and I already see the first questions popping in, so that's good. So we, we, that's good. we, we bought some time in yeah, this case. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we already said it. I think we, you said it. Uh, it summarized uh, the three words, reliable, precise, and robust, because those are the three keywords that you can remember when it comes to this camera. And uh, yeah, the first, maybe also obvious question, is this camera also well integrated into VMSs from other partners, or basically uh, things like uh, the VMSs from Genetech, Malson, et cetera? It is fully integrated into uh, the VMSs that, that, we, that yeah. you mentioned. All the top VMSs, it has been integrated. Even there is the metadata which we showed, and that's also supported. You know, and of course, also our own VMS. Yes. Yeah, of course, of course. Let's, let's not forget our own video Indeed. management system, <laughs> that's true. Uh, another one, and I like that question because that means that we are already thinking about the next stage, is how can I get technical training on this, uh, on this camera? Um, there is already a technical yeah. training available in our learning portal. So uh, there's, together with the introduction of this camera, the training is already released. And yeah. You can go to your learning portal and follow the training there. Yeah, so, so maybe even, even one step in between, uh, go to your account manager. Uh, basically, he, he or she can also uh, basically show the way to our uh, Bosch Academy, basically, yeah. and there you will then find the technical training on this camera. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is also an interesting question because we have, of course, maybe a little bit pushing on the AI parts. Now the question comes in, how well is this AI performing at night uh, in low light conditions? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, hey, we showed the videos for the perimeter protection, so in the low light situation uh, with the IR on, it's really working very well for the long range detection. Uh, on, uh, in traffic applications, typically there is already some uh, lighting on the highways or on the roads. Um, so there the camera typically even stays in color mode because it's very sensitive and also the detection is then very accurate. One of the benefits of AI is that you really can uh, focus on the cars itself. It's not detracted, distracted by the, traf uh, the headlight Headlights, beams yeah. or the tail lights, so it's really focusing on the cars. And we also trained our cameras on these night scenes, so it's really, really very accurate also in the low light situations. But also there, I think you already said it, uh, we, ha we have tried, and, and you know that also, let's say, live uh, video analytic demonstrations in this studio setting is a little bit difficult, so we try to do uh, the best we can, but I also think you offered it already, uh, get in contact with one of our account managers and ask for a demo, because, uh, you know, that's, that's still the best proof, you know, get... Uh, get our hands dirty and make sure that we have a, a real life setup where you can then experience it yourself. Um, 
I think another interesting question and uh, feature something probably you can answer is that uh, we have this new IP horn speaker. So, hey, this means that someone is already uh, aware yeah. of that we have this new IP horn speaker. It would be really nice if that could be integrated because that is then uh, nicely complementing the parameter security solution. Mm -hmm. So I think that's possible. Or not. Yeah, that's possible through BVMS where it can be integrated uh, then or, or any VMS, uh, it can be easily integrated. Uh, if there is any specific requirements, we can also yeah. look into that and see how, how to make it. Uh, yeah. make so, it basically, so basically what you're saying, uh, yes, with the IP uh, horn loudspeaker can be combined with our cameras yes. and you can also use multiple VMSs. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I, I will take the, the question as they come. Uh, basically, th we talked about the white light, eh? so the, the deterrent. Can yeah. you also switch it on manually, so yes. from the operator client? Yeah. Uh, at this moment, it's not yet part of the GUI. It will be added very soon in the uh, coming firmware release. Uh, but indeed, the idea is that you can use it to trigger on an event. So you can switch it on once something is detected. You can also do it manually and, uh, for example, switch it off after a certain time. Uh, or you can just use it, uh, like when it gets darker, to switch on the white light so the yeah. camera stays in color. So there mm -hmm. are different options to, uh, yeah. to work with the white light. And then when we are talking about white light and closely related to that, uh, we talked about lenses. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you showed uh, telelens uh, examples. So what are the different lens options, lens size options? Shall I take it? Yes, please. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we have indeed uh, for each uh, variant, so we have two, four and eight megapixel, and we have a white and a telelens variant. Uh, white angle is... Uh, for the 2 and 4 megapixels is 4.7 to 10 millimeters, and the 8 megapixels is 4.4 to 10. And then the telecameras, uh, we have 10.5 uh, to 47 millimeters for the 2 and the 4. So that's really the long range where you saw the detection up to 160 meters. And for the 8 megapixel, there will be uh, a 12 to 38 millimeter uh, telelens. So we really can, really can cover this long uh, this distance from very wide, uh, uh, over 100 degrees, uh, to yeah, a very narrow beam of uh, under 10 degrees. Yeah, I was already, I, I was listening, so, but I, no in, in the meantime, I was also trying to uh, filter the questions a little bit. Uh, so keep them going, and as I said, if we can't answer them all, then we will come back to it uh, in our follow-up. Uh, but here, I think, also an interesting question with regards to, um, again, the IVA, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. basically our artificial intelligence. Uh, can the IVA Pro traffic uh, trigger also alerts if a, a vehicle crosses a certain, or let's say goes uh, beyond a certain speed? Uh, yes, so you can set speed limits, uh, you can also do stopped vehicle detection or slow moving objects. So with the speed detection now with the auto calibration, it's quite accurate and you can set as thresholds indeed. can be a line crossing, can be in a field, uh, so you can uh, raise alarms when something exceeds or is below a certain speed. And an interesting question related to that, but then we go actually from the highway to the river, mm -hmm. or maybe sea, is it also possible to measure then the speed of a boat? I think this will be a very yeah. uh, tricky one. Challenge tricky one. situation. I don't think that's uh, to detect objects on water is really a challenge, yeah. and then to real speed detection, I think, is not uh, so not with the traffic. Uh, IVA Pro traffic. Basically, also not an application that the camera is intended for. No, correct. Let's be let's, let's be, be clear. clear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it possible? And I think it goes a little bit uh, along the lines of what you just said, uh, Boudewijn. Is it possible to use it for traffic jam detection? Uh, yeah, it can be based on speed. We also can do uh, occupancy in the, in the scene. So if there are too many objects in a certain area, that you get an uh, alert. So yeah, technically it's possible to detect uh, traffic jams or slow moving uh, traffic as well. Yes. Yeah, and then here it's um, yeah, that's also interesting. So what's the maximum lane number? So the number of lanes on the on the highway that can be covered by one camera having the traffic detector. It's not so much limited to lanes. You saw we uh, had a, uh, here we had a six-lane highway, and we were detecting easily in all lanes. Um, so it's about yeah, depending on your opening angle, how far the camera is away. So yeah. we have a certain requirement uh, for pixels per meter uh, that you need for the detection, and you can use our uh, lens calculator and yeah. uh, video analytics calculator to determine this. But yeah, you can you, you can see very far away. Can, we can also detect these cars. So if you have a, a ten-lane uh, Highway, yeah, you can, in the cameras has the opening angle and objects are big enough, you can detect yeah. them all. I, I think it's also important how you install the camera, at yeah. which, uh, yeah. is it on the pole or is it on the bridge? Yeah. That also has yeah. an effect yeah, on, of on, course. on how many lanes you can detect. And that's a nice one because, and that also brings us to the last question, unfortunately, so my apologies if we did not answer all the questions, but as said, we are coming back to that. Does the camera, uh, does it need to be directly above to measure speed? Uh, it's 
if you want the most accurate, if the, if the objects are long in the view, so if they move from left to right, that's the, the best way. But you can see, as you saw in the scene, um, yeah, if the car, camera is directly, the, ca the car is approaching the camera directly, it's even the most difficult one. So if there's an angle, it's easier. Yeah. So the bigger the angle, it's easier it is. But we took the hardest one on the highway. It's really on top of the highway, yeah. which is the worst case. So it works, but if you want, the further you, the angle, the bigger the angle is, the more reliable it is. Yeah, yeah. but basically, uh, it doesn't necessarily need, doesn't to, be need to be precise. Be exactly. No. Yeah. Okay. That's the yeah, as said already, uh, this brings us to the end of the live stream. Thank you very much for watching us, and thank you, VJ and Boudewijn, for uh, for basically explaining our newest uh, bullet camera. Uh, yeah, again, my apologies if we did not answer all the questions. We will come back to that. Also, do not uh, shy away of contacting our account managers uh, to ask your questions and also get in touch for live demos, etc. Thanks again for joining and um, yeah, hope to see you next time for one of our live streams. Thank you and have a good breakfast. Thank you. <laughs>